Hey guys, my name is Alex Sutherland. You may know me as ASUD from Carbunners or Reddit, and I'm making a tutorial video for my software GTO Range Builder. I'm going to explain what it does, how it works, and how you can use it to learn GTO Play and apply that to your games to win money at the tables. So, the basic idea behind GTO Range Builder is pretty simple. GTO Range Builder computes precise game theory optimal strategies for heads up river scenarios. So, you enter the pot, board card, hand ranges, stack sizes, everything that defines, you know, a specific river situation. And GTO Range Builder will show you full GTO strategies and equilibrium data for both players. So you can understand what optimal play looks like, use that to either apply it to your own game, spot weaknesses in your opponents, and hopefully increase your profit. The best way to see this is just to see the program in action. So I'm going to run through an example scenario with you guys now. Entering a scenario into GTO Range Builder is pretty easy. You just have to tell it the state of the game at the start of the river. It doesn't matter how you got there. All you need to tell it is the starting pot, which I put to 100 chips here. The effective stacks, I said there was 80 chips left to bet. Then you need to tell it the board cards that came out up to the river. So there was this uh, Ace-10-10 board where the flush completed on the river. And then you need to give it bet sizing information. This is the list of bet sizes you want GTO Range Builder to consider betting when computing optimal play. So it always, the software is always going to consider shoving and checking. So it always consider betting 80 in this case. I told it to also consider betting a half pot, which would be uh, 50 chips into 100 here. The more bet sizes you put in, the more complicated the solution is going to be. So it can be a little harder to digest if you have it consider too many bet sizes. But uh, you know you have flexibility to put in up to three different bet sizes in a different in addition to a shove, and you only need to put in pot percent bets here, even if the stacks were big, so there was room for raises and re-raises. G2 Range Builder will automatically build out that scenario with every possible raise and re-raise size based on the allowed bet sizes in percentage of pot. Then the next step here is we need to give each player a hand range. I'm just going to give some, you know pretend ranges here that have nothing to do with real life, but you can uh, filter by suit, pick out specific hands, and give players very realistic ranges that mimic a specific situation you run into in your games. But for this demo, I'm just going to give each player's, I'll give the hero the top 11% and the villain the top 16%, so the hero has the slightly stronger range here. The other options we have here is we have the option to force the out of position player to check that will generally weaken his play, and you won't have a real GTO solution. But it's something that can be useful for analyzing things and understanding the difference between when the out-of-position player checks versus when he is allowed to uh, lead out. And then this max number of raises option, this will let you tell GTO Range Builder uh, not to let people raise back and forth in kind of small bet sizes. It'll If you set this to two, it, that means that the second raise has to be an all-in. But I'm going to leave it at any for now. It doesn't matter because our stacks are short here. And the next step is just to click Calculate. The only thing I'll mention before I do that is that we do have links down here to this tutorial video, our in-application tutorial, and our documentation. All right. Once I click Calculate, GTO Range Builder will solve this exact scenario for equilibrium play. It takes a few seconds. And then it shows us our game tree. Before I explain the game tree, which is this thing here, I'm going to quickly look at this uh, top left panel that tells us some equilibrium data. This is telling us that when both players play the GTO strategy, the hero's EV is about 60 chips and the villain's EV is about 40. And that kind of makes sense. We gave the hero a slightly stronger range and he's in position. So we would expect that he's going to win more than his fair share of the pot. The other important thing here is it shows us this Nash distance. Uh, you can check our fact for an exact definition of the mathematical calculation we use to compute this. But the basic idea is that this tells you how far from exact GTO play you are. And it roughly means that if uh, the best a player could possibly do by altering a strategy would be to gain uh, 0.03 chips. So this is an extremely precise equilibrium for all intents and purposes. It's exact. Uh, but if you put in extremely complicated situations with big hand ranges and lots and lots of uh, raise sizes and deep stacks, you may get less precise solutions. And we always tell you exactly how precise our solution is so that you don't need to guess. You never need to wonder if GTO Range Builder is telling you the right thing. So let's get into the game tree a little bit here. 
for those of you who aren't used to looking at game trees, the basic idea is pretty simple. Um, there's this root node here where everything starts, and this is the last action here is listed as the river was dealt. So this is the start of the river, and branches coming out of this node represent an action a player might take. So this branch here is the case where the villain checks. The villain can also bet 50, that's this green branch, or the villain can shove for 80, and that's this branch down here. And each branch leads to a new node, the nodes are these blue circles, where someone else gets to make a decision. So 100% of the time, that's how often we reach this node, because it's always the start of the game. And, th and then 73% of the time, the villain's going to check, and we end up at this node here, where it's now the hero's decision, and he can bet, he can check, he can uh, bet bigger, and so on. So you can think of a path through this tree as kind of an action line. So if the villain checks, the hero bets, and the villains actually check raising, and then the hero folds, that's this path through this tree, where I go check, bet 50, raise, fold. Uh, every node will show you how likely it is in kind of totality, in a, a global likelihood. And if you want further details in a node so you can really understand these strategies, you can just click on them to get an in-depth display. So I'm going to look at this node here, which is the villain is checked, now the hero is deciding what to do. And you can see that you get a list form of the strategies and ranges that you can click if you want, and you can scroll through and look at particular hand combos. Uh, you can also click these grid icons, and this will give you a visual display, which is usually easier to understand. So first I'm going to look at the strategy display, and this tells us what actions the hero is taking with various parts of his range. This says he's always betting, you know, aces, which is the nuts. He's always betting tens, which is, or aces, tens is the nuts. Aces is close, obviously. And then the other stuff he's betting is some top pair good kicker, and then these king x hands are really his pure bluffs here. And then he's checking his hands with uh, medium showdown value, which are his weaker aces and his uh, pocket pairs. So that's the strategy. The other part of the view we can look at here is for either player, we can click on their range and we can get an EV heat map for what the EV of having a given hand at this node is. So for example, the EV of having queen 10 suited here is 113.32 chips. Uh, you know, that kind of makes sense. It's near the top of our range, and if we're going to bet sometimes, our opponent's going to call. So having trips, you know, has that EV when both players play optimally. So that pretty much wraps up what you need to know to browse a solution. You Basically, you can just click around on any nodes, investigate the strategies you see fit, figure out what's going on until you have a good understanding of the gameplay. So to wrap up, I wanted to let you guys know I'm definitely thinking of making more of these tutorial kinds of videos. This was just an introduction to how the software works. Some topics I'm considering are showing how GTO Range Builder can be used to solve model slash toy games. So for example, it can solve the Ace King Queen game from the Mathematics of Poker, it can solve their Carvoyance games, it can solve you know a whole bunch of simplified versions of games that use representative ranges and let you analyze kind of a class of situations in a way that can be easier to understand and digest than solving specific real-world river situations for GTO play. Um, GTO Range Builder can also be used to make inferences about optimal term play via a concept called backwards induction. I talk a little bit about backwards induction on my blog, but uh, if you guys want a video actually showing how to use that thought process to make inferences about the turn, definitely let me know. And just in general, if you have any other requests for tutorial videos, it would be helpful, help you understand how you use GTO at the tables, how you use GTO Range Builder to work out GTO play that you can actually constructively apply. Uh, please, you know, post in the YouTube comments, tweet at me, email me, whatever. So uh, if you want more of this kind of stuff, definitely follow our blog, follow us on Twitter. I'll tweet anytime we release a video or an interesting blog post, and subscribe on YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys.